Hello, I'm Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe's Audio and Video Tools. Now, there are lots of new creative features in Adobe Audition CS6 and lots of different ways for you to modify your audio in real time in the multi-track view. And I'm going to cover two of the really exciting ones today, uh, which are clip time stretching and real time pitch correction. So if we take a look at the video that we have here, we've actually got uh, this scene which has been slowed down where we have this motorbike doing this jump. And if you take a listen to the original sound, well, it's just not right because it's not exactly fitting the duration of the jump itself. Take a listen. So obviously, the audio ends too soon. What we want to do is elongate the audio, but more importantly, maybe we want to actually drop the pitch as well, or maybe we want to maintain the pitch. So when you're dealing with clip time stretching, you have complete flexibility over how you adjust duration and pitch, and these can be done simultaneously or independently of one another. So by selecting the clip, I can go over to my properties panel where you can see that we have a twirl down here that's called stretch. Now to enable clip time stretching in the multi-track as a whole, you need to navigate over to the top of the editor panel here and you'll actually see that we have a tooltip here with an icon, toggle global clip time stretching. And by doing that, that's going to put this little white triangle in the upper right hand corner of every clip, literally allowing you and enabling you to simply click and drag to adjust the duration. But before you do that, you want to choose the mode that you're using and the actual type of stretch that you're going Going to be implementing. So we've got two modes in Adobe Audition CS6. We have a real-time mode, which is just as it says. It's real-time. You click, you drag, you stretch it to fit a video or fit a section, and it just stretches. It's not the greatest quality, and you might encounter some artifacts. So to avoid those, we have the rendered version, which is going to render fairly quickly right in front of you, depending on the duration of the clip itself. Now, beyond that, you have three different types of stretching that you can use. Monophonic and polyphonic are for mono or polyphonic sources. And by using either one of these, you're going to be able to control duration without affecting pitch. You have complete control of independent pitch and time. However, if you want to implement a classic vary speed, and this would be the equivalent of slow slowing down a tape machine where the pitch gets lower as the duration increases, you can choose the vary speed method. And for this motorbike, because we're slowing down time, I don't only want to elongate the sound, I also want to drop the pitch as well. So I'm going to choose rendered high quality, vary speed. Now directly from the dialog here, I can actually click and drag to adjust the duration, or I can simply go up to the clip. And you'll notice that my icon turns into this little uh, sort of a clock here with a left right arrow. I can click and drag to fit the edge of this other clip. It'll quickly render this right inside the timeline. And now when I play this back, wind it back like so. You get the idea. So pretty cool. And again, if you want to audition what different types of stretching sounds like, we can go into something like the monophonic mode. Again, it's going to re-render this because we're in the rendered high quality mode here. Let's go ahead and let it do that. Wind back again. Hit play. Now you can hear it's obviously a higher pitch because it's maintaining the original pitch of the original speed of the motorcycle, but that doesn't really make sense stretched over time when the bike is moving in slow motion. So again, you have a lot of flexibility when you're dealing with how you play with these different types and different modes inside the stretch dialog in the properties panel. So that's clip time stretching, very flexible, very easy. Now, if you're dealing with out-of-tune vocals or instruments, here's where you're going to use the new automatic pitch correction feature inside Adobe Audition CS6's multi-track. It's really easy to use, it runs in real time, and you even have a manual correction option which you can use in the waveform editor later. So what we have here is a basic vocal and guitar on separate tracks, and take a listen, and you'll hear that there's some, there's some problems in the vocal. Take a listen. Certainly not the worst vocal I've ever heard, but again, could probably use some correction. So if I go over to the effects panel, I'm going to go up to time and pitch, automatic pitch correction. So once the dialog opens up, here's where you can actually choose the scale and the key. Now, if you actually know the scale and the key, you're going to get better pitch correction results. In this case, I happen to know that this song is in the key of C major, so I've chosen C and major. Now, if you don't know the key, you can choose the chromatic option. The chromatic option is not going to give you, um, well, the results won't generally be as good because it's just going to try and snap it to the closest note, which may or may not be in the actual key of the song. So again, if you know the key, if you know the scale, 
better results automatically. This happens to be in C major. I'm going to choose that. Now, something else that you can do is you can adjust the FFT size. FFT size is essentially the number of slices that it takes each one of those notes, cuts them into, and then analyzes and tries and repairs them. Well, it's my experience that fewer slices means better correction. So by default, I will typically set this to 1024, even though the actual default setting is 2048. So let's go ahead and set that at 1024. You'll notice that you have your calibration setting here. Again, you'll seldom ever change this from A440. And then, of course, you have attack and sensitivity. The attack time is going to adjust how quickly that correction begins to happen. And if you want to effectively overcorrect or make the sound sort of like the modern pop record, you're going to use a slightly faster attack. So first, I'm just going to use the default settings here, and let's take a quick listen. And I'll begin with the effect off, and then I'll turn it on. And you will most definitely hear the correction at work. Let's go ahead and solo this as well. Let's just mute the guitar and take a listen. Michael, row the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Michael, row the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Okay, now again, it seemed like it didn't quite catch all of the little pitch variances. So here's where you may want to increase the attack time. Again, faster attack means it's going to hit that pitch correction that much faster, and it's going to correct it that much faster, and produce that very modern kind of sound that we're very used to in pop songs. Take a listen. Michael, row the boat ashore, hallelujah. Fantastic. Now, again, if you're brave and if you actually want to manually correct pitches, you have the option to do that as well. But that's not done in the multitrack. That's done inside the waveform view. So with the wave selected here, I'm going to go up to effects, time and pitch, manual pitch correction. You'll see that's processed there. And now what you actually see is a pitch view displaying all of the pitches of the song, or I should say all the pitches that are in the particular scale of this tune displayed on the right, all the way down from A2 to A6. So again, consider this your piano roll if you've ever done or worked with MIDI before. You're just seeing the actual pitches here. And at this point, what you would effectively do is play this back and listen for any section that's out of tune and then actually correct it like this. So let's first take a listen. Michael Rove. Okay, so this note right here probably needs some correction. So you notice I can make a selection, and then you have this sense adjuster here. So if we play this back as it is, if I adjust the number of cents, let's go plus 50 here. <laughs> and you can actually see that this green line is growing, right? So the green line is representing the change in pitch. The blue line underneath is representing the original pitch. Now, if we wanted to actually make this whole section a bit, uh, a bit changed in pitch like that, we could make that adjustment. This is not going to sound good, so I won't bother playing it back, but you get the idea. This is granular level control. So if you actually want to get in there and manually adjust individual pitches, you can do that in the manual pitch correction mode, or you can do it in real time, taking advantage of some of the incredibly new, fast, and powerful creative features in Adobe Audition CS6.